Now that you know what rational expressions, rational equations, and rational inequalities are, we will be now moving to a deeper part of it which is the rational functions. On this video, I'll introduce you to what rational functions are. But before that, take a look on the objectives for this week and the content of this video. A rational function is defined as a function consisting of rational expressions. Its notation is f of x equals g of x over h of x, wherein g of x and h of x are both functions. Note that this is just a notation. Thus, the true figure of rational function looks like this f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x plus 6. In this example, the numerator of it has a degree of 2. Again, what I've said on the previous lessons, degree is the highest exponent of an expression, while the denominator of it has a degree of 1. The graph of rational function looks like this. The graph is non-continuous compared to any other graph that you'd faced during your high school days. And that is because of the dashed line between the curves which later will be discussed as the lesson goes by. Like any other graph, rational function has its own features. It has the so-called asymptotes and intercepts. Well, I'm pretty much sure that you'd encountered this with other graphs. Asymptotes are dashed lines or imaginary lines in which the graph gets closer and closer but will not intersect. On some cases, the graph can pass through it, but only on a given certain condition. Rational function has two asymptotes. The vertical asymptote, which is parallel or sometimes overlapping with the y-axis. And the horizontal asymptote, which is parallel or sometimes overlapping with the x-axis. For you to visualize what asymptotes are, take a look on the graph of this rational function. The green lines here are the axis. The y-axis is the line drawn vertically or standing, while the x-axis is the line drawn horizontally or lying down. The red lines, on the other hand, are the asymptotes. This one here is the vertical asymptote. You can see it is parallel to the y-axis. To remember it well, this asymptote is just like the y-axis and it is standing. This one is the horizontal asymptote. You can see it is parallel to the x-axis. To remember it well, this asymptote is just like the x-axis and it is lying down. On the asymptotes, you can see the graph gets closer but didn't cross the border of it. Now the blue lines here are the graph itself. 
asymptotes can also be expressed into equation form. It is done by tracing the intersection of this line to its corresponding axis. Take a look on this vertical asymptote. It intersects the x-axis at negative 2. Because of that, it was expressed as x equals negative 2. Now, take a look on this horizontal asymptote. It intersects the y-axis at 1. Because of that, it was expressed as y equals 1. Sum of rational function doesn't have any horizontal asymptote. But, they have the so-called oblique asymptote. Sometimes, this asymptote is called slant asymptote. And it occurs if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Like this graph. This graph is the graph of y or f of x is equal to x squared over 2x minus 2. This graph here has an oblique asymptote here. It has this kind of asymptote because the degree of the numerator is greater than of what the denominator has. The numerator has 2 while the denominator has 1. There are rules encompassing on how we can identify the nature of horizontal asymptote of a rational function. Rule number 1, if the degree of the numerator is greater than or larger than what the denominator has, then it has oblique asymptote which I introduced a while ago. Rule number 2, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then it has a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis itself. Or, in equation form, it is y equals 0. Rule number 3, if the degree of the numerator is equal to what the denominator has, then the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the coefficients of the leading term or named as A over B. When we say ratio, it is also same as the quotient or the answer that you will get when you do division. Another feature of the graph of rational function is the intercepts. Intercepts are the intersection of the axis and the graph. If it is an intersection on the graph and y-axis, then it is called y-intercept. If it is an intersection of the graph and x-axis, then it is called the x-intercept. Take a look on the graph I have here. This graph clearly showing the blue dashed lines as vertical asymptotes. Those two asymptotes have an equation of x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 2. Because it has intersections with the axis at negative 1 and negative 2 respectively. But do not get confused with it as intercepts because these points here are not included on the graph which is our green curves here. Also, this graph has a dashed red line which is the horizontal asymptote on y equals 0. 
that's why it was overlapping with the x-axis. Also, this graph has an x-intercept at negative 2, which is the blue point here. And at 3, which is the blue point here at the right. If you notice, the graph just gets through or passes through the horizontal asymptote, in which you will think that it didn't follow the definition I had given a while ago with regards with the asymptotes. Well, this kind of graph belongs to a special case. This graph is still correct because there are graphs that can get across the horizontal asymptote given that there's a point on the asymptote that also serves as being the intercept of the graph. You'll notice the graph here don't continuously go down as if it was being pulled by the asymptote again. That's another condition before the graph can pass through an asymptote. The numbers here below the asymptotes are fractions, which is pretty much a result when dealing with fractions or rational expressions. To sum it up, there are two conditions that a rational function can pass through the asymptote. Number one, if the intercept also belongs to the line of the asymptote. And number two, it can pass through but will never go down or above continuously. Also, this graph has a y-intercept at negative 2 which is the red point here. In general, the intercepts must always be on the axis. Also, the intercepts were written on the form of ordered pairs or points. If it is an x-intercept, it could be written as x0, like what 3, 0 is on the example graph. And if it is a y-intercept, then it could be written as 0y, like what 0, negative 2 is on the example graph. So that's it for this video. Thank you and I'm hoping that you learned a lot and see you in the next lesson.